day is about to begin. problem with the pumper truck this morning. Everybody's a little bit nervous, but I think it's going to work out okay. We saw a little bit of stuff coming out. So the hope is it works. Fingers crossed. Okay. I don't think this is normal. That's looking better. Garage floor being poured now. <laughs> just kidding, that's not what's supposed to be happening. I'm just glad to see liquid coming out of that tube. All right, let's talk distribution of labor. So this is our first pour. So we decided that the um, guys that were actually placing concrete in the forms needed to be the more experienced guys. So the two guys on the left actually work for a basement crew, but they have not done a lot of ICF uh, work. And so when you're placing concrete into a regular uh, aluminum form, um, the speed that the concrete goes in is not as important. With ICF, you want to slow that down. You want to lay it down in courses or layers, and you need that each layer to set up before you uh, put the new course on top of it to reduce the pressure on the bottom of the wall. If I have anything to say about these guys, because they did a great job, it's that we went too fast. So that left Dan and I to do the vibrating, and vibrating is you know more of a, a job that the rookie can learn it can be overdone and you don't want to do that. So there is some concern there, but we thought we were plenty capable. I will say that if you are doing this at, on your own and you're DIYing it, that you're also the GC or the general contractor and you don't want to be a laborer and a general contractor at the same time. I wish I would have been able to oversee more of what was going on versus just running the vibrator. And as you can see here, we're having to move the vibrator uh, down the wall every 16 to 18 inches. We run it in and then we pull it back out. And what that does is it vibrates the concrete, turns it liquid, more liquid than it already is. And it lets it flow around the rebar. It re uh, releases the entrapped air and makes it to where the uh, concrete is just more solid and it's it makes it stronger and it makes it uh, like I said flow around the rebar and connect to the rebar so it's very important if you do it too much you can put too much pressure on the bottom of the wall you can have blowouts or you can actually settle the aggregate completely out of the concrete um, if you do it too little then you don't get the concrete to settle in around and grip through all the rebar. Uh, but it's also not something that takes the general contractor to do. I will say that it is a young man's job. Um, it doesn't seem like it would be that heavy, but that thing got really heavy as the day went on and you kept going in and out of that wall with that uh, uh, hose and then Dan holding the motor up above his head and, and moving back and forth. It definitely took a toll on us after a while. 
Another blowout. Damn it. <clears throat> One in there too now, huh? Yeah, that's loud. So you see where that right where Paul's hand is. Nope, was not meant to be there. They're just putting a little footing in because we were going to do that after we were all done. <laughs> Footing's going in now. Okay. And. You know, sometimes your plans change. Oh, you're good, but I'll just make sure it's level up. So, <laughs> you heard Gary say plans change. Uh, reminds me of a song you make plans and you hear God laughing. In this case, it was more of a right chuckle. Uh, he was definitely looking out for us here. So the, the footer that you see down there on the left-hand side was a footer that we missed for a load-bearing wall along the stairwell. And we recognized that we missed it. We framed it up, and we were going to pour it last. And the blowout that we had was in that 15-degree or 105-degree corner uh, the pressure was too great and we didn't have enough strapping there and it actually pulled out and caused a blowout which caused all that concrete to flow out on the ground while it was literally within shovel throwing distance of the footer that we needed to fill. So we started throwing concrete over into that footer uh, and all of the concrete that would have been wasted actually got used in that footer and we had very little waste. But we also had to play Legos and try to, maybe puzzles is a better better term. We had to try to piece together the styrofoam that broke out. We had to try to piece it together and figure out how it went in the wall and then try to find every piece of wood and, and plywood and two by four that we could find to brace it back together and put kickers on it uh, so that we could continue with our poor, and that's what we're doing right here, is trying to place that back together. Blow out before. All 
All right, so something that we missed, whoops. We had a little blowout over there in the wall. Uh, we had a little excitement. It's supposed to kind of like watching paint dry, but we had a little bit of uh, fun, not so much fun, but a little bit of excitement with a bit of a blowout. Um, my understanding is the concrete was just coming too fast. And anyways, we got it all braced up. We're good again. And yep, we continue to move on. So Kara, could you please tell me what they're doing at this moment? We are checking all of the strings and making sure the walls are plumb. Plumb good. Are things looking good? Yes. Oh, fantastic. We finally have. Woo, 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 woo. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> 